Hello, dear friends, and greetings from the city of Trivandrum in Kerala. So, let me congratulate uh, our dear friends, Dr. Mayur. Dr. Tony is from my own city in Trivandrum. So, anyway, congratulations for the very successful Hormone India Convention. And I'm grateful that I am also given an opportunity to be part of this very prestigious educational event. So, I am given the task of discussing. Uh, the evolution of insulin pumps. And this is uh, more or less the discussion of not only the history of evolution, but also on where we are currently exactly positioned. The journey from 1974 to 2022. So these are my disclosures. Our dream has always been a device for Automated insulin delivery is affordable, which is affordable for the government. So patients always used to ask us, do we have something to offer for the government? And now in India, we are fortunate to have our own patients experimenting, re-engineering, using DIY artificial pancreas, some of them even using connected devices. And we do have our own innovations in diabetes technologies. And it all started with the discovery of insulin. In 1922, before insulin was infused, even Leonard Thompson was offered only the starvation diet. And the diagnosis itself used to be a death parent. But when you are going back to the evolution of insulin delivery devices, it was in 1963. Dr. Arnold Karish came up with this model. And this is this used to be a very big device, a cumbersome one, but this could be regarded as a prototype of an insulin pump. The 1974 discovery of biostata from Dr. Ernest Frederick, I would consider is probably the first ever device which gave an idea on automated delivery of insulin. But the results, which were so successful within the hospital, couldn't be replicated in the free living environment. In 1979, from South Korea, Diana Pump was launched. Of course, it was not popular in the international market. And hence, in the documentations, including in the chapters and the textbooks that we have written, in the journal articles that we have written, we do have documented Minimed Medtronic as the first ever insulin pump. And that was the Minimed Find Out 2 in 1983. Since this was one of those devices within the DCCT clinical trial, it became so popular. It became so popular with intensive management of diabetes, resulting in substantial reduction in the development of complications. How many of you know that insulin pens were launched after the official launch of insulin pumps? And this is the first insulin pen, the Nova pen. For India, insulin pumps were launched officially only in 2004. And we all started using initially the refurbished pens and soon, within a year, Medtronic made available the most recent devices, and these are the paradigm insulin pumps that we started using in the year 2004. This slide, I would say, is very important, especially for those students in medicine attending the Hormone India Convention. The stages through which the insulin pumps have advanced from the earlier standalone devices to the stage one of automation, and that was a threshold suspend. When insulin will be stopped or the pump will be shut off when there is hypoglycemia. Stage two is predictive low glucose suspense. That is when the glucose is going to be low, then the algorithm will decide to stop the automatically stop the delivery of insulin. Stage three of automation will be automatically adjusting. So the basal delivery will keep on changing once in every five minutes in response to the sensor glucose values. And the stage of four of automation is where we are currently positioned globally, including in India. So we are very fortunate to have 
the stage four of automation. And that is in addition to basal automation, even the bonus delivery can be partly automated, especially when the glucoses are high or when the glucose is low. And stage five is actually our dream. It can be insulin only devices or it can be multi hormonal devices when it is even able to detect the meals automatically, automatically deliver both the meal boluses and also the correction boluses, completely eliminating the carb counting, the manual meal bolusing and so on. That is a dream of future and that is going to be the completely closed loop system. There are two types of insulin pumps. One which is available in India are the tethered insulin pumps and this is an example of patch insulin pumps. Omnipod is the one currently popular all over the world. But from 2009 onwards, there used to be a solo micro pump. Currently, this is a property of a kitchen. And soon, maybe in another six months to one year, we are anticipating the arrival of solo micro pump. And that is probably going to be the first ever patch pump in India. And they are also planning to have this integrated uh, with a continuous glucose monitoring device so as to make it a closed loop system. So from 2010 onwards, we do have in India and for the developing world, the insulin pump guidelines, whom to de uh, deploy an insulin pump and whom not to the indications, the contraindications and so on. However, the technology is now rapidly transforming. It is transitioning and we do have the closed loop system. So what is a closed loop system? So in the closed loop system, in addition to the insulin pump, which is delivering continuous subcutaneous insulin continuously, and in addition to an advanced continuous glucose monitoring device, because CGM is also progressing, and now we have the generation seven of most of the CGM devices, so there is a very sophisticated control algorithm. And the control algorithm has resulted in automation. So 640G used to be the most popular first gen artificial pancreas for the last seven years. And then you have the 670G, which is a hybrid closed door system with automated uh, basal delivery, which was not available in India. And this is the Diablo hybrid closed door system, 2018 innovation, especially in Europe. So if you are an interested doctor, or an interested uh, medical student who would like to go through the uh, progression or evolution of insulin delivery devices. I would request you to go through one of the reviews that we have published in the year 2020, starting with the use of Arnold Kaddish, the insulin pump that I have shown in the beginning, culminating in 2019 with 780G, and then in 2018 with Omniport Dash, Tandem Control IQ in 2020. So this is the Omnipod dash and that is in 2019 and then you have the advanced hybrid closed loop system that is the AHCL and I would say that this has been one of the dreams come true for everyone in India because we never thought that 780G will arrive in India that very soon and there are probably more than 500 subjects now using 780G in India. This automatically adjusts both basal and also bolus once in every five minutes. So in case you forget to bolus before a meal, this is the only device currently officially available in India, which can even automatically bolus. And these are the devices promising with the help of these algorithms, time in range, which is almost close to even 85 or 90%. So there are three different types of algorithms. The PID that is proportional integral, integral derivative. MBC stands for model predictive control and the fuzzy logic which is especially useful in the wake of automated bolus delivery. So at the click of a button over here, and this is a home screen, you can even display the percentage time in range between 70 and 180 milligrams per deciliter. And this is even without downloading the data from the pump. And the same is visible in the screen in the mobile phone, which can again be shared with 
multiple other partners, including the family members. And this is a recent study which has been published in Lancet Diabetes and Endocrinology, and this is the adaptive study with 780G, advanced hybrid growth group therapy in contrast to the conventional management in type 1 diabetes using the insulin pens and intermittently scanned continuous glucose monitoring device. And these, these are the same results that we are also obtaining in our clinical practice with the help of 780G and the advanced hybrid closed loop algorithm. This is the reduction which is expected and realistically happening in the real world. 1.54% reduction in the hemoglobin A1C. And in many patients with uncontrolled diabetes, the hemoglobin A1C of 11 or 12, it can even be a reduction up to 3 to 4 percentage. And this is 0.2 percent reduction in the other group. So this is quite obvious that this is going to be, and this is the innovation which has resulted in a rapid transformation in the management, especially of type 1 diabetes. And no wonder this is a celebrity film actor and the ex member of parliament gifting a 780G to a person with multiple episodes and hospitalizations due to diabetic ketoacidosis from Kerala. And this is the same uh, person with type 1 diabetes. You can look at the video over here. And within three weeks of deployment, this is the time in range, 100% time in range. And this is our own team. And uh, these are the members of the team. And look at the comments made by the parents and the patients with type 1 diabetes. I cannot believe that this is an insulin pump. Call it only by the name 780G because this is not an insulin pump. Insulin pump used to be the standalone devices. And uh, this is a device which has resulted in a rapid transformation. Many patients have commented that this is the first time ever since the diagnosis of diabetes that they are having a peaceful sleep at night. And this is worth the cost. But my worry is this is another parent. The TAR always used to be around 50% with standalone insulin pumps and continuous glucose monitoring. But with 780G, it is always between 85% and 100%. This is beyond the expectations. And this is, I would say, even beyond the current recommendations. The device is worth the cost. But the only worry is how many people can afford it? Because it is so expensive. It is so expensive. So these are some of the solutions. Of course, these are not approved by any scientific organization or by any government. This is do-it-yourself artificial pancreas. So if you are interested in how you can support your patients, please go through this very, very detailed review on the classification, on the available devices, on how to use the Riley link, how to establish a communication uh, between the pump, the continuous glucose monitoring devices, the re-engineering, the already available devices, downloading the algorithms from open source and so on. No wonder our uh, review on DI, DI, DIY artificial pancreas, though it is not approved, is referred to by the ADA, the EAST, uh, and even the 2022 American Diabetes Association practice guidelines. And please remember, the reason why this unapproved DIY is referred to by the American Diabetes Association. We cannot discourage our patients from using this. And if in case we need to troubleshoot, we need to have some knowledge, know how on how to use it so that we can assist and be a support to those patients using this. And this is just Sethi. Just Sethi, the first user of do-it-yourself artificial pancreas and has demonstrated documented 100% time and range with the use of devices. So we from India, we are also having our own solutions on cost-effective use of technologies in diabetes. But the take-home point is whoever is eligible, whoever is affordable, or whoever it is going to be a life-saving device, please initiate at least a conversation with your person because they will find some way of using it because ultimately these devices are going to be life-saving. So thank you, thank you very much dear friends for giving me this opportunity and I wish the convention every success. 
and unfortunately i couldn't join physically since i am traveling 